Good morning. Once again, uh, Dr. Salim is here with you guys. Uh, let's talk about the dead zone area. If you are scanning uh, one of the tissues somewhere in the human body, what is a dead zone area and how we can fix that problem? So a dead zone area is actually, we all know when we're scanning the ultrasound probe, it has crystals or PZTs, active elements, what do you call it? So these are different names for them. They, when they produce the sound pulses, they vibrate actually. The electric pulse will vibrate when they reach to these crystals or PZTs or leads are connected titanate, they vibrate them. So they had to vibrate to produce the pulses, the, the sound pulses. So they go, the pulses go and, and they return back, the echoes are coming back. So sometimes what happens, the structures are very superficial. They're really close to the transducer. There is no space. There is very small space, a little distance. So no damage time for the sound to go and come back. So it's the space only the crystal can vibrate on that area. Because normally what happens when these crystals or these uh, PCTs, when they vibrate, they're listening back also. When they send it, they listen to the reflection back, the echoes to come back. So in this case, when we have a dead zone area in our transducers, so what happens, the crystals vibrate, they produce the, the pulses, sound pulses. So the structure is, we can say it's like almost under the skin. So very close, very superficial, too much superficial. And then there is no time for listening, actually. So that's why that area is not scanned because our scanning is to reflect back, to bring the information. So in this case, we don't get any kind of echoes back because it is really superficial. The, the, there is no more time for the coming back echoes to be listened by the crystals or PZTs. So for this reasons, sometimes we face to these problems. So what is the solution? And also, before I go to the solution, the question is, if somebody asks you this question too, or maybe if you're sitting for one of your board exams, that uh, which probes will have a thicker dead zone and which probes will have a thinner dead zone? So this way we understand which probe to be used and to be avoided from this dead zone uh, problem or we can say issue. So the easy solution is look or think about the SPL, special pulse length, any transducer who produce a smaller SPL or very short SPL, special pulse length, they are very short, smaller. And those transducers who produce a longer SPL, so the longer SPL transducer will have a thicker dead zone. More area will be not seen if you're scanning. So for example, I'm just giving you an example. It's just an example. If I'm using a probe, there will be, for example, I have two probes. One probe have cannot see something even in one centimeter depth. But there is another probe which can only not see something in uh, three millimeter, I can say. Below the three millimeter, like zero point, you know, three centimeter after that it can see it. So now which probes are those ones? So on low frequency transducers, those transducers who have operating frequencies are very low, low operating frequency. They will have a thicker dead zone. And those transducers who have a high frequency transducer, operating frequency is really high. They will have a very thin, like there will be less chance to, to missing an area to be not seen on the screen for you guys. So for this reason, we use high frequency transducers for superficial structures because high frequency transducers have a very thin, very a little bit uh, dead zone area, which is not uh, visible. We don't see them. So for that reason. Now, for example, let me share with you guys. Okay, what is the solution for this? Number one, we use a high frequency transducer. Okay, if still I have this problem with a high frequency, like I said, still high frequency also have a dead zone, but it's a thinner compared to the low frequency transducer, then what is a complete solution, 100% solution? On that case, what you can do, there are some uh, two, two, two ways to answer this question or to, to have a solution for this problem. Number one, uh, you can buy a different probe. It's called water pad scanner. It is a transducer which already came with some gel inside. The coupling gel is inside by the matching layer. So it's there actually, it's it's intact with that probe. So when you probe, put the probe, actually it's a little upper, the probe, 
but the area is filled with this uh, gel, Oku pulling gel. Let me share the actually the picture with you guys. I mean, that will make it a little easier. This is one of the picture. Let me share that picture with you guys. Now, this is a picture. This one we see, so this is a transducer. This is a water path. So this water path is actually giving you a distance. Let the crystal to vibrate, to send the pulses to that tissue where you want to see, and then they have more time or more distance to be listened to them. So now if you are using this low high frequency transducer, for sure you will not face to that uh, dead zone. It's completely gone now because this is all gel. So you're gonna you're gonna touch this portion of this transducer with the scan or to that uh, human body where you're scanning. So now that dead zone is gone. Now you can see exactly if it's something subcutaneously, you will be able to see that. So dead zone is gone here. Now, the other solution is uh, just like, for example, uh, if you cannot buy this transducer or it's not available, it's not compatible on your computer, on your machine or something like that. So another easy, simple, um, and also with no cost, uh, very cheaper, easy way, put a lot of gel, like too much gel, like make a, a big bunch of the gel and then put your transducer on the top of the gel. Do not touch the skin. Just touch the gel, the coupling gel, and then the, the, the pulse will travel inside of the gel and will go to that subcutaneous something you're looking to, to diagnose or put your uh, evaluation on that. So then it will come back. So it's exactly the same water pad gel uh, system, but you create it. So because that is the best way to use that probe, but sometimes uh, we are not, we don't have availability of those probes. I mean, it's difficult uh, to have it, or maybe it's costly, or maybe your machine don't accept it for any reason. So just put more gel and put your probe on the top of gel, but don't go all the way to the skin. Just touch the gel, not the skin. In that case, the dead zone will be gone. Like for example, we have, these are the probes we all know, these probes are, for example, let me share these probes once again, uh, different probes. Okay, now we can see this. These are the probes. We all know the, the linear array transducer or linear switched array or linear sequential array transducer, different names, scientific names. And we have a curvilinear or convex probe and we have a phased array transducer here also. So we all know high frequency, somehow in the middle, not very high, not very low, and then the low frequency transducers. So first of all, we should try to avoid it by the probe uh, selection when, when we have this problem of the dead zone area. So use the highest probe, the probe which have the highest frequency, operating frequency, because they produce a shorter SPL. And they have a little longer SPL. They have a very longer SPL. So it is all the matter of the SPL also. Thanks a lot. And please don't forget to share these small clips uh, with those who are sitting for their board exams, like SPI or ARDMS, CCI, or any, any of the board exams, especially the radiology department. I'm talking about the ultrasound. Uh, they're diagnosed with the pictures. So please share with them and tell them to subscribe to the channel as well. And uh, I'm waiting for your comments. Let's see if I can explain it better than that. Thanks a lot and have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.